welcome back everyone. So this is the last lesson for this Coolist template. Uh, I hope that so far you've been able to learn some valuable concepts. In this session, we're going to reuse a lot of them. For instance, we're going to reuse data validation and the array formulas, and we're going to add a couple of very, very small things. The first thing is I'm going to work a little bit on my formatting because I'm nearing the end of my template. I want to start making it look as good as I can. And also we're going to do a few things that just help us when we add a bunch of columns because that's what we're going to do next. Um, so first, I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to make it a little bit more roomy in here. So I'm going to resize those rows. By default, they're 21 pixels high. We're going to switch that to 30. And you see it's giving me a heads up because I'm trying to edit the uh, formula that we locked earlier. So I know what I'm doing. I'm going to say, okay, don't tell me this for the next five minutes. And then I'm going to align this in the middle. There we go. Uh, then I want to freeze everything up to the second column so that even if I have to scroll to the right side to see uh, my document, I never lose sight of the position and the name of the person because that's important for a crew list. So I'm going to go to view, I'm going to freeze, and say freeze everything to the, the current column, which is B. Uh, next, like I said, we're going to add a few columns. So I'm going to do insert right, and then let's add one more. The first one is going to be our uh, kit rental, because a lot of freelancers get that. So we are going to need that in our crew list to calculate our rates properly. And the type of kit rental, is it a daily, is it a weekly kit rental? Uh, in this column, let's say our producer is going to have a $50 kit rental. Now, we don't need five zeros for that, four zeros for that. So I'm just going to go back to regular notation. I could even just probably do two, but you never know. Um, and then in kit type, I'm just going to need to know whether it's a daily or a weekly kit rental. So for that, let's do a little bit of data validation. Select the column, go to data validation, and then because there's only two items, I'm not going to create a range for that. I'm just going to list them. First one is going to be daily. The second one is going to be weekly. And that's going to give me a drop down that says daily or weekly. So this could be a weekly, and then let's add one for our uh, director photo, but that is going to be daily. Now that we're talking about days, let's add that in. So I'm going to add another column, all right? And then I'm going to remove this data validation. We, we don't need that. So let's go in the menu. Let's remove it. And uh, I'm going to need seven days for each day of the week. So let's add another column. And rather than just going and saying, OK, insert, 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 let's just use a shortcut. So instead of undoing, we're going to use the redo, so command Y. And so that's going to repeat the last action. So that's three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days. So now I've got all my days of the week. And again, that was command Y to do this. Um, I don't want them to be that wide. So I'm going to resize all of this. Let's say to 50. All right. And so you see now we're starting to have a lot of stuff on the screen, which is why I wanted to have this frozen so that I can scroll left and right once you know start things start to get pushed to the side. Um, so in those columns, we're going to track days. So that means we need a date. So today is the 11th. Uh, but I want this date format to be a little bit more uh, complex. So I'm going to go to Format, Number. And then I see I have a bunch of options, but I'm going to create my own. So I go to More Format, More Date and Time Format. And again, I got tons of options that to choose from, but let's say the one I wanted was in, in the list, I would want to create it. So I can just delete everything that's in there. And here I'm going to ask for the day, and I'm going to say I want it as the abbreviation, then a space, then I'm going to want the month, but I want it with the leading zero, and four slash, and the date. And same thing, I want to want the leading zero. When I click apply, I'll see that it says mon 5, 11, 
uh, not enough room in there. So why don't we add a row at the top and then join these two cells and merge them. And finally, we're going to use this feature here to orient our text and we're going to choose 60 degrees and this way it's going to put it across. Now next, I need the other days of the week. So let's drag that to the right and you'll see that Google Sheet is pretty smart. It's going to know what I'm trying to do here. But ideally, I want these dates to be dynamic based on what I'm typing in the first cell here. So that, um, you know, let's say I put 512 instead, I want it to give me Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc., etc. So instead of having just static dates, I'm going to say equal J1, and I'm going to add a day, just say plus one. Here we go and I get Wednesday, and let's just drag that to the right, and essentially each cell is going to look to the cell to its left and adjust that. So my only problem is if I delete this, it's going to default to a random uh, date. So if we wanted to solve that, we could write a little if statement. Well, so let's do it. Why not? So we're going to say equal if j1 has something in it, and that's the notation we used in uh, one of the first lessons. So if J1 is not blank, do J1 plus 1. Otherwise, keep it empty. All right? And we're just going to keep dragging this. And this time, when I type a date, here we go, everything pops back up. So now, what could be good is maybe adding a little bit of conditional formatting to to signify that something needs to happen here. So let's go ahead and do that. I have this selected. I'm going to go to my conditional formatting and I'm going to say um, if it's empty, then make it pop in yellow. And so that when I delete this, it tells me, that, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for something here. Obviously, it's not the most clear way to do this, but you know, to start, it's it's a good way. Um, next, I'm going to add conditional formatting for it to tell me what is today. So I'm going to select all my days here, and I'm going to add another conditional formatting rule. So if you close the menu again, just go back into it with a paint bucket. But we're just going to add a rule, and we're going to say um, uh, date is, and it even has it. It says today, so it's super easy to build. We're going to choose a different color for this. Let's say that. And then now what we just realized that, well, it would be nice if you kind of highlight the whole column rather than just the day. So we can do that with just this, the way this is built. So we need to, to go ahead and, and build it ourselves. And for that, we're going to say equal. And we're going to say J1 equal today. And it worked here, but what about, you know, if uh, if that was not in J1, if, you know, let's say uh, I said, okay, we're not today, we're, we're three days ago. Well, actually, it actually still worked. It's pretty smart. It detected what I was trying to do, and it's doing it here. So the last thing I need to do is just make it highlight the whole column. So for that, we're going to put our little dollar sign in front of the, the one here, and that means it's going to impact every single row. Finally, we just might want to be uh, mindful of where this rule stands. If I, if I want um, the purple to stay even if let's say I've paid someone, then I need to make sure that this conditional formatting rule is all the way at the top. And this way, no matter what I do here, it stays that way. Okay. So let's keep moving. Now we need to specify uh, which days people are working in order to be able to calculate um, their wage and also their kit rental fee. So I'm just going to say, okay, everyone is working. Oh, and we see we're still in dollar signs here. So let's grab this and let's go to format and let's just say automatic. It's just going to give us a one. Um, and the reason I choose automatic is because here I just want to say everyone's worked one day 
and maybe producer is going to get a prep day and a wrap day. And here I want to say, okay, let's get let's get a half day in there. And same thing for wrap. So with the automatic format, I can just say either it's a 1 or a 0 0.5, and automatically it's going to choose the right decimal points. Whereas if instead I was choosing something like a number, then everything would get decimal points and that would be annoying very quickly. Um, let's keep moving. Now that we have our days, we can start calculating what we owe people. So let's make another uh, column to the right. And this is going to need to be a little bit bigger. And we're actually going to need three of those. So two, three. And in there, we want to know um, first, uh, what are the estimated wages? Then, estimated uh, kit rental. And finally, the estimated payout, which is going to be the sum of these two. So, I'm going to start by fixing this right here and say, just want this to be normal. And these are most likely going to be dollar amounts. So, let's take care of that right away. And now, let's see how do we calculate estimated wages. Well, the logic is we want to sum everything that's in this row, and when we want to multiply that by the uh, rate that's right here. So, let's do that right now. Say equal sum, and we're going to select everything that's in there, and we're going to multiply it by our rate. All right, so, so far so good. I've got three days at 400 a day, 1,200. We're in good shape. Now, this is a calculated column, so why not build an array formula for that? So let's start doing that. And very quickly, we'll see that we have a problem here because I need to work with an array, but here I already have an array, and it's not as simple as just saying, like, well, do J through through J and then P3 through P, um, that is not a notation that works with array formulas. So I need to find a different way to, to sum everything. And the easiest way to do that is just to, instead of using already an array like this, we're just going to add every column. We're going to add each day, and the array formula is just going to look on the row where I'm on to, to find the result. Let's start that. Instead of a sum, we're going to want to say, all right, I want everything that's in the column that has Friday. Then I'm going to add to that everything that's in Saturday. And I'm just going to keep going with every single day of the week. And so you see, it's starting to become a little, little confusing in there, but you know, we're going to, we're going to work on this together to, to fully understand what's happening here. All right, so I get all my ranges, and I'm going to multiply that by the rates, but I need also to make this uh, an array as well. So it's not just E3, it's E3 through the bottom of the column. I hit Enter, and that doesn't work. What did we do wrong? Well, we wrapped, we started our array formula, but we didn't really close it where it should be closed. Like, this works, we, we didn't. Uh, add uh, appearances that we should have. We need to make sure that we are adding everything before we multiply it, and then finally we close the array. So when you're dealing with this function, just be very careful of where you're starting a function, where you're ending it, what's in there, what's not. All right, and so now I have my calculations for the entire uh, crew list. Now, obviously, there's someone at the bottom that has uh, no rate, so we can't really calculate that. So why don't we add an if statement? For that, I'm going to move to the formula bar up there to have a little bit of more room. So I'm going to say, and actually, I can be inside my array formula because I'm going to check if there's something in column E no matter which row it's on. So I'm going to open my array formula, and then I'm going to say if... And then I want to know if there's something in here. If there's something there, then you can run this calculation. 
And if there isn't, then I want you to do nothing. Right? And finally, I close my array. And so when I hit enter, here we go, it removed the very last one. So it's a little bit cleaner. I'm sure that some of you may be wondering, like, well, what do we, what do we do about those half days here? Because uh, essentially, it's it's adding them as half days. So instead of doing 400, it's doing 200. But what if I'm, I want to pay someone for you know, the full day, even though they're you know scheduled for a half? Well, in that case, we need to wrap our um, ranges with a function and that function is called round so just very quickly let's see how that works i'm gonna i'm gonna put this here but it's just for the sake of example this function called round rounds a number according to a certain number of decimal places so very simple if i say round 0 0.5 and i don't even need to specify a decimal place i can if i want i could be like one or two or whatever i want but if i don't it's just going to round it to the most logical thing, which is one. So if I want to make my half days count as full days when I'm paying people, then in my array formula, I need to wrap every single one of these column ranges into the round function. I can't just round the, the entire uh, selection here. That's gonna give us some problem down the road, uh, but instead, I can just, just say, okay, round this one, and then that one, and then this one. Okay, so you get it. We're just going to finish this, and that's what can be you sometimes about building complex formulas. You're going to have to just be patient and do the same thing a bunch of times. All right, last one. All right, and now we see that my total has jumped to 1,200 because it's factoring all of this as a full days. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the kid rental. Uh, the kid rental is a little bit more complex because we got to look whether we are a weekly or a daily kit, but let's ignore that for a second. Um, we're going to repurpose our formula. And same thing for kit rentals, we're going to just round everything so that it counts as a full day. So I'm going to put that in there. And instead of multiplying by the rate, I want to multiply by the kit rental. So instead of E3, we're going to do H3 through H. And instead of checking if there's something in the rate column, I'm going to check if there's something in the kid rental column. And everything else stays the same. So here we go. I got two kid rentals so far. And right now, it's telling me it's the same, but that's a mistake, right? Because this should be 50 because we're a weekly kid rental. So we need to build an if statement. So I'm going to go back to the formula bar because again it's going to be a little bit uh, a little bit complex here. So after my first if statement, I was looking if we had something in the, in the kid rental rate column. Uh, I need to start an other if statement. So I'm going to add a row, and like we said earlier, you can nest as many as you want of these, but it starts becoming confusing pretty quickly. So we'll say if. And then we need to say, okay, it's column i, i3 through i, because we're working with arrays, equal um, daily. Then we wanted to run this formula. Otherwise, so whenever you, you start getting confused, just look at the helper box. Based on your cursor, it will tell you where you are. So I clicked right after the... Uh, the comma here, and it tells me, okay, I want the the expression for what happens when when this is false, when it's not daily. Well, if it's not daily, I mean, we could nest another statement that says, like, look if it's weekly, but really, logically speaking, if it's not daily and there's something in H3, well, we're going to assume it's weekly. It's not a flawless logic, but for the purposes of this document, it's going to do the job. So, 
If it's weekly instead, well, we don't need to look at the days at all. We just need the kindred dollar amount. That's for the whole week. So I'm going to say H3 through H again because I'm working with arrays. And I'm going to close the parentheses. And if I look at my helper box, now it's telling me like, okay, this is, you're editing right now what's, what you do if uh, it is true that there's something in H3 through H. Uh, I'm going to put a comma, and now I need to tell it what to do if there's nothing, and we've already written that it was to do nothing. So I'm going to hit enter, and now we can see it shows 50, and if I change to daily, it goes back to 150. So again, um, you know, lots of factors here to, to work with, half days, uh, whether it's weekly, daily. So it'll take a little bit of time to build these formulas. If you, if you get confused, just don't worry about making an array. Just make it like a regular formula. It'll be a lot easier to see what's going on. You won't have like all these, all these ranges. You'll just be able to do a sum across the board. And then once you've got the formula working, then just go in and switch out your sum for this array of columns to add together. All right. And so finally, I need to calculate my estimated payout. So again, I can use an array formula. And very simple, I say I want this and I want this. All right, and we see though that eh, it did add a zero. So again, let's let, let's add a little bit of something here. Say um, if the addition of these two columns is bigger than zero, then do it. But otherwise, do nothing. And I need to close my um, if statement. And here we go. And so that removed my zero. So from there, we're just going to start cleaning things a little bit more. Um, for instance, I don't really need to know what's in those uh, two columns here. The estimated payout is probably fine by itself, so I can hide that. Um, same thing here, there might be sometimes when I want to track the days, maybe others where I don't. So rather than just hiding that, though, I'm going to group these columns. And that's going to add a little box here at the top that lets me toggle things on and off. So it's pretty handy. Uh, next, I see I have a bunch of grid lines everywhere. Let's let's get rid of those. So um, we're going to go to the View menu. I'm going to uncheck grid lines. Now, although it works really well for my header, um, here I may want to add back some, uh, some grid lines. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select a nice little light gray and just put them back. Oh, the warning's back. So we're going to disable that again. All right, so I have my grid back. And why not have like a, a footer in there? Now, it's a little bit dangerous because we got array formulas everywhere. So we're going to add to, we're going to have to adjust those so that it doesn't break. But let's do things one at a time. First, I'm going to uh, remove this conditional, this data validation here, remove it there too, remove it there too. And then I'm going to make this uh, a different color. All right, and we're going to want white text. Um, I'm just going to get the, the sum of everything that's in there. Whoops. And now the problem is that here is giving me uh, 1.5. So that's great. Um, but I could also want it to count as a uh, you know, full day for some purposes. So I'm going to build myself a little bit of uh, a dynamic footer. I'm going to go to my data validation, and I'm going to say, OK, give me either the, the crew count or the man days. And based on one or the other, I'm going to adjust this. So if it's a crew count, it should be two, right? And if it's a man day, then one and a half is technically correct. So I'm going to start typing in there, and I'm just going to build a little if statement. I'm going to say if this is Mondays, then I want to um, just uh, sum the column. There we go. 
now if I put one more comma, it's telling me like, hey, what if it's what if it's false? Well, I could just say like, okay, then just count me the the full values. But I actually I'm going to build another if statement. Just check first that this says crew count. And if that's the case, then I'm not going to use round. I'm going to use this function called count a. And there's a bunch of counts. There's count a, count, count if. Count will add the uh, will count the number of numeric values in the data set, and count a will uh, count the number of values. So the difference being that if you use something that's not numeric, let's say a little x instead of a little one, um, it will still work. So same thing, just count the whole column. And now I need to uh, specify what happens if it doesn't say crew count, so that's nothing. I close my if statement, and now I'm going to have um, to close one more if statement. And I can hit enter, and now when I change from Monday to crew count, it changes my total. So next I need to copy that to the right and left, but if I do that, it's not going to work very well because I have to remember that although this is a relative reference and I want the column to change as I'm dragging my formula, I7 here, I7 here, and here it needs to be static and absolute. So I'm going to use um, a function f4 to switch that to a absolute uh, reference. Same thing right here, but you could just write the dollar signs in front of them if you want. And so now I can drag this to the side and same thing to the left. And now it's going to work everywhere. So we need to fix our array formulas and we need to fix our conditional formatting. Let's start with the conditional formatting. So I'm selecting the entire sheet by clicking in the corner between the rows and columns. And then I'm going to go to my conditional formatting menu. Because I selected the entire table, it shows me all the rules that I've created so far. So I need to change this one and say, instead of S17, just stop at S16. There we go. For the others, it doesn't matter so much because the trigger to change the formatting of the cell is gone. I no longer have a drop down or a checkbox, so I don't have to worry about this. And then we're just gonna maybe uh, look into our array formulas and I can see that here it actually stops at 16 so we're good and let's check this stops at 16 we're good as well so all of this is still working just fine um, one more to check for our hourly rate and I see that this one on the other end is going all the way to the bottom so even though right now it's not breaking anything Let's just add in here and say E3 through E16, same thing for F, and then if we want, we can just double click to select the, the range, copy it here, and same thing with F, and we're going to hit enter, giving me a warning, but we're all good. Um, and so now it's starting to look pretty good. I'm just going to add my show name, that could be important. And I'll probably hide all my, my chart of accounts. I'll just hide this. I'll hide the roster as well. Uh, the other tabs don't exist anymore because that was just for us to learn how to do things. Um, and yeah, it's starting to, uh, to look pretty good. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see the whole uh, product. Uh, we're able to select names in the list. We're able to pull someone's information uh, directly, Oop, and we don't see the phone number, so let's do that. Um, we are able to input a rate and a guarantee and have it automatically calculate the hourly rate. We can enter a kit rental, specify if it's daily or weekly, and have that impact the estimated payout calculations. We can track paperwork and have, a, have the caller be updated automatically. And finally, when we've paid someone, we just check the box and it removes them from our list by making them a light gray. So I hope that this was useful for you. What's important here is to make this document your own. Um, you know, all of what we've created here is useful and will work for most people, but just challenge yourself to create the features that work for you 
and for the people in your production office. I hope you've had a good time. I will see you on the next tutorial. Bye.